Welcome to the part 1 of RCC design series where we will learn how to design RCC structural members like slabs beam column and foundation as per IS 456 2000 In this video we will learn to design a one way slab Imagine a slab like a thin sheet of paper when the slab is subjected to a load it deflects it is our job as an engineer to design the slab such that it resists the load and does not fail there are three ways a slab can fail that is failure in bending shear and deflection before designing for this failures we have to calculate if a slab is one way or two way by taking the ratio of ly by lx ly is the longer length and shorter length is lx if this ratio is greater than 2 then it's a one way slab but if it's less than equal to 2 then it's a two way slab in our case the ratio of ly by lx is greater than 2 hence it's a one way slab also let's assume the grade of concrete is equal to 25 and the grade of steel is 500 step 1 is to find the effective depth and effective length of the slab effective depth of the slab can be found using this formula span is the shorter length lx basic value is taken as per clause 23.2.1a which says for different types of slabs basic value generally ensures that the slab is within deflection limits assuming our slab is simply supported we can take the basic value as 20 mf is the modification factor which is a multiplier for basic value and it is inversely proportional to the required depth of the slab higher modification factor means less depth required and vice versa presently we can take the value of 1.25 but later we will calculate modification factor as per figure 4 of IS 456-2000 substituting these values in the equation d equals 2500 divided by 1.25 into 20 hence calculating effective depth will be equal to 100 mm now the total depth d is the effective depth plus clear cover plus half the diameter of bar Assuming 10 mm bar, the equation becomes 100 plus 20 mm clear cover plus 5 mm which equals to 125 mm. So our effective depth is 100 mm and the total depth of the slab is 125 mm. Next, calculating the effective length. Effective length is calculated as per clause 22.2a which states effective span of a member that is not built integrally with its support shall be taken as clear span plus the effective depth of the slab or beam which in our case is 2500 as clear span plus 100 mm as effective depth of the slab which equals to 2600 mm or center to center of supports that is 2500 mm plus 230 by 2 twice which equals to 2730 mm the lesser of the two value has to be taken so we will take the effective length as 2600 mm step 2 is calculating the design bending moment and design shear force assuming the slab to be a 1 meter wide strip the total dead load will be gamma into b into the total depth d that is 25 kN per meter cube which is the density into 1 meter width into 0.125 mm so the total dead load becomes 3.125 kN per meter. Let's assume the live load to be 3 kN per meter square and flow finish as 1 kN per meter square. And since we are only considering 1 meter strip, we can multiply both by 1 giving live load of 3 kN per meter and flow finish of 1 kN per meter. Adding all of them gives the total UDL of 7.125 kN per meter. And Factoring the load by 1.5 gives the total factored UDL as 10.687 that is 11 kN per meter. 
To calculate factor moment mu, we will use the formula WL square by 8 since we have assumed the slab to be simply supported. Substituting the value of W and L effective in the formula gives the factor moment of 9.25 kN meter, that is 9.5 kN meter. Next, the factored shear force VU is WL by 2. Substituting the values give the factored shear force as 14.5 kN. So, our factor moment is 9.5 kN meter and factor shear force is 14.5 kN. Step 3 is to check whether the effective depth D we provided is safe for the factor moment MU. By referring to this formula as per Annex G 1.1c, which is for balanced section. You can watch this video to learn more about different types of section through the I button here. So, in this equation, we have values for MU, FCK and B. To obtain the values of XU max by D, we have to refer to the notes of clause 38.1, which shows the different values of XU max by D for different grades of steel. Since we have used Fe500, we will substitute the value of XU max by D in our equation. So we get MU is equals to 0.133 FCK BD square for Fe500. Now, substituting the values of MU, FCK and B, we will get the required depth of the slab for factor bending moment as 55 mm. On comparing with the depth we've taken, the required depth is less. Hence, our assumption is correct and we can proceed with the effective depth of 100 mm. With this, we have all the parameters required to design the slab for bending, shear and deflection. Step 4 is reinforcement calculation. As per Annex G clause 1.1b, MU equals 0.87 FY AST D into 1 minus AST FY by B into D into FCK. We have calculated all these values. Only AST is unknown. So, substituting the values and solving for AST gives the total steel required as 228.987 mm square. For a unit span of 1 meter, we have to provide 228 mm square of steel. For which, we first have to choose a dia of bar and then calculate the spacing. Clause 26.5.2.2 says the maximum dia of bar shall not exceed 1 eighth of the total depth of slab, which is 1 eighth into 125, which equals to 15.265 mm. So, we can choose bars which are less than 15 mm, which leaves us with 8 mm, 10 mm or 12 mm bar. Let's calculate spacing using 10 mm bars. So spacing equals to area of single bar divided by the total area required. Substituting the values gives the spacing of 342.98 mm. Now IS456 also has requirements for spacing as per clause 26.3.3b which says the spacing of main reinforcement bars shall not be more than 3 times the effective depth of solid slab or 300 mm whichever is smaller. So 3 times of 100 is 300. So we limit our spacing to 300 mm. Hence the main reinforcement is designed as TOR 10 at the rate 300 mm center to center. Before proceeding, we also have to check whether our design meets the minimum reinforcement criteria as per clause 26.5.2.1, which says the minimum reinforcement shall not be less than 0.15% for mild steel, that is Fe250, and 0.12% for high strength deformed bars, that is Fe415 and Fe500. Since we are using Fe500 steel, 0.12% of total cross sectional area can be calculated by substituting the values which gives the minimum required area as 150 mm square which is less than the provided area that is for 300 spacing AST of 1 bar divided by the spacing in 2000 gives 260 mm square hence the design is safe step 5 is to check for shear whether tau v is less than tau c tau v is the nominal shear stress 
given as per clause 40.1 as tau v equals v u by b into d. Substituting the values we previously calculated, we get tau v as 0.145 newton per mm square. Now, to check the shear capacity tau c, we refer to table 19, which shows the design shear capacity from M15 to M40 grade of concrete and above. We've assumed M25 grade of concrete and the percentage of steel is calculated using this formula. Substituting the values, we get percentage of reinforcement as 0.26%. Since shear force is maximum at supports and we take alternate bent up bars, the actual reinforcement is 0.13%, which is less than 0.15%. Hence, we take the minimum value for M25 that is 0.29 Newton per mm square. Now, comparing the shear stress tau V with the shear strength tau C, we can clearly see that shear stress is within the limit of shear strength. Hence, the slab is safe in shear. Step 6 is to check for deflection. Here, we have to check whether L by D provided is less than L by D required. L by D provided is the effective length and effective depth which we have calculated previously. So the ratio equals to 26 and L by D required is basic value into modification factor. Here modification factor is not assumed like previously but calculated as per figure 4 of IS456-2000. To find modification factor, we need to know the values of percentage of tensile reinforcement and the stress in steel for service loads that is Fs. We already know the percentage of steel to be 0.26% and the stress value is calculated using this formula. Substituting the values and solving gives the value of Fs as 255.408. Now if we look at figure 4 for 0.26% of steel and 255 Fs value, the corresponding modification factor is 1.5. The modification factor is now substituted in L by D required, giving the value of 30. Now, since L by D provided is less than L by D required, our slab is safe in deflection. Step 7 is to calculate distribution steel. Since we are designing a one-way slab, we provide minimum reinforcement for distribution steel as per the same clause 26.5.2.1 and like previously for FE500 we require 0.12% minimum steel. Substituting the values and solving gives minimum area of steel as 150 mm square. So to calculate spacing we use the formula area of one bar divided by the total area required into 1000. Assuming 8 mm diameter of bar the spacing comes out to be 334.9 mm which can be round up to 330 mm. But again, as per clause 26.3.3b2, the horizontal distance between parallel reinforcement bars provided against shrinkage and temperature shall not be more than 5 times the effective depth of a solid slab or 450 mm whichever is smaller. 5 times of effective depth is 500. So comparing with the spacing which we provided, it is within the limits hence safe. So our design becomes TOR8 at the rate 330 mm center to center for distribution steel. The final step is to check for development length. Here we check whether the moment M by V plus L0 is greater than LD where M is the factor moment, V is the factor shear force and L0 is the length of the hook. Since we are taking no hooks we will take the value of L0 as 0 and phi is the diameter of bar. LD is calculated as per clause 26.2.1 as phi into sigma s by 4 tau bd where phi is the nominal diameter of bar, sigma is the stress in bar at design load taken as 0.87 fy and tau bd is the bond stress calculated as per clause 26.2.1.1. For M25 grade of concrete, tau BD equals to 1.4. But as per IS1786, these values shall be increased by 60% for deformed bars. 
सो नाव टाउ बी डी इक्वल्स पॉइंट एट सेवन इंटू फाइव हंड्रेड इंटू टेन डिवाइडेड बाय फोर इंटू वन पॉइंट फोर इंटू वन पॉइंट सिक्स वन पॉइंट सिक्स इज फॉर सिक्सटी परसेंट एडिशन विच इक्वल्स टू फोर एटी फाइव पॉइंट फोर नाइन वन एम एम कंपेरिंग दिस वैल्यू विथ एम बाय वी प्लस एल जीरो वेन सॉल्व इक्वल्स टू सिक्स फिफ्टी फाइव पॉइंट वन सेवन टू एम एम नाउ द वैल्यू ऑफ एम बाय वी प्लस एल जीरो इज ग्रेटर देन एल डी हेंस द स्लैब इज ओके इन डेवलपमेंट एज वेल सो द फाइनल स्टेप विच रिमेन्स इज डिटेलिंग द स्लैब एज पर कैलकुलेशन द टोटल डेप्थ ऑफ स्लैब इज वन ट्वेंटी फाइव एम एम द मेन री एनफोर्समेंट इज टॉर टेन एट द रेट थ्री हंड्रेड एम एम सेंटर टू सेंटर इज लेड अलॉन्ग द शॉर्टर स्पैन ऑफ द स्लैब एंड इट इज ऑल्टरनेटली बेंट अप वाइल द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन स्टील इज टॉर एट एट द रेट थ्री हंड्रेड एम एम सेंटर टू सेंटर विच इज लेड अलॉन्ग द लॉन्गर स्पैन ऑफ द स्लैब सो विद दिस आर डिजाइन ऑफ वन वे आर सी सी स्लैब इज कंप्लीट एज पर आई एस फोर फाइव सिक्स टू थाउजेंड You can continue watching the playlist from here and YouTube thinks this video is the best fit for you. So thank you for watching and I'll meet you in the next video.